Welcome to episode 38 of uh, Business and Leadership Stories with the excellent Sachin Mandari from The Story Co. Or you can follow them on The Story Co. I have to say this, that week after week, his stories have been gathering great strength. All he does is narrate an anecdote and then a real life anecdote and then tell us what marketing or communication tip we can imbibe from that. What's up? Yes. How are you, my friend? Very good, Rishi. As usual, this is the best part of the week. <laughs> well, I know you from a time when you were footloose, fancy free, a bachelor traveling across <laughs> South America, kind of like an Indian Che Guevara. And I know that uh, you learned Latino and salsa dancing. And the remaining stories I shall keep to myself because you have a wonderful <laughs> wife. You're a man of family means now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, family man three. <laughs> yeah. Considering your extensive travels, your <coughs> life is replete with stories. And which are the most important stories you will ever narrate is my question to you. If you would pick one that you'd like to narrate and then we'll come uh, to what we can imbibe from it. Right. Rishi, uh, I mean, interesting that you remind me about uh, my trip in Latin America and one of my favorite uh, stories that I came across uh, in Latin America was the one in Brazil. I went to this city called Salvador. It's on the, it, it, it's in, it's on the northern side, like the northern coast of Brazil. Uh, this city it was the city where all the, like, you know, there used to be a transatlantic slave trade. Uh, a lot of people from the African continent were brought in as uh, slaves uh, uh, what, or they were en enslaved and got brought to Brazil and they used to work on the sugarcane colony uh, uh, plantations and you know Portuguese colonies and things so on and so forth. Uh, now these people who would come in, they would be forcefully converted into Christianity uh, by their plantation owners or the colonizers, right? And uh, it was thought that these people are uh, have converted and now they are uh, praying uh, to Jesus and other Christian gods. What used to happen actually is that under the garb of a Christian ceremony, a lot of the uh, enslaved people, the Afro-American people or Afro-Latinos uh, in Brazil would actually be praying to their own ancestral gods. So they would take an idol of Jesus, but inside the idol of Jesus, there would be Oshumare, who is uh, their uh, ultimate or supreme god. Wow. And they would be praying to that. And similarly, Mother Mary was, I think, uh, uh, equal to Yemanja, who is uh, who's the sea goddess uh, for a lot of African faiths. So, and 1855 is when finally slavery was abolished uh, from the country, from that nation, from Brazil. And it took a few years, a few decades for it to actually, you know, fall into place and slavery to actually get ab abolished or disappear. And when that happened, an interesting new religion came out, and that religion is called Candomblé. So, Candomblé is what is called a syncretic religion where uh, people believe in not one but two religions and they mix it up. So uh, people who follow Gandamle also follow Jesus but also follow Oshumare, pray to Mother Mary but also pray to Yemanja and it's a very interesting mix. But the point is, the interesting story is that all of these rituals of their African God and African faith and ancestors were kept alive by these enslaved people and when I was traveling in Brazil a lot of anthropologists and historians from Nigeria, Uganda and other African nations were traveling to Salvador to rediscover their own roots because these stories, these gods, these rituals have actually disappeared from Africa. Uh, wow. So people who were enslaved are the ones who kept their own you know, tradition, their rituals, their roots alive. Uh, so I think it's a fascinating story of self-identity and you know, uh, keeping your faith alive. So, so, I mean, yeah, every time I listen to the story, it, it really inspires me. So, yeah, you, you know automatically that uh, there are Brazilians of Spanish and European descent. Uh, if you go by footballers, Kaká is a Brazilian footballer. Uh, you know, you can easily see he's from that line, that de descent. And of course, the Afro-Brazilians, which is Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, not Cristiano Ronaldo, but the original Ronaldo. Really? And yeah. of course, the great Pelé. <laughs> Of Fantastic. <laughs> now, uh, what we know today as Brazil's culture, samba, barracuda, capoeira, all of that comes from Afro-Brazilians. So that is the rich heritage that they brought the, with themselves, the slave people. 
What is the lesson that we can learn from this wonderful example of history that you've given us? Uh, Rishi, so a couple of lessons. Number one, I think the main lesson is that you know the most important stories that we ever narrate uh, are to ourselves. Now, these enslaved folks, Afro-Latinos, Afro-Brazilians, chose to tell a story that their gods and their rituals and the place where they came from originally, their ancestral homeland, is very important to them and they continue to narrate that story despite uh, facing a lot of challenges uh, because they were working on plantations and probably did not have even agency over their own lives. So uh, sometimes we get bogged down with life right? and we choose to narrate a negative story to ourselves that nothing is working out, I'm not good enough, I'm a loser, things like that. So I think agency in life comes when you narrate the right kind of stories to yourself so that's the most important thing the stories that you narrate to yourselves are more important than any story you'll never ever narrate as a storyteller or as a communicator but a subset of that you know what i experienced with uh, this entire story is that i wrote this story at a time when i was traveling in brazil and i was writing uh, you know journalism pieces so i i wrote this story for forbes live um but the fascinating thing is that this story continues to uh, you know, inspire me, but it also is a part of my workshops, trainings, uh, and uh, you know, just regular coffee table conversations or cocktail conversations, if you may. So, what's important is that you know, take, get the stories, but also keep narrating them because you don't know when an interesting story will actually hit home with people and how it will get you more opportunities. So, create a story bank, but also keep narrating your stories over and over again. That's well fine. said. Uh, Sachin Mandari is helping companies, startups, professionals break the culture of MBA, speak and use the power of stories to achieve their business goals at speed and ease. I highly advocate you go on to LinkedIn and check out his Win With Stories newsletter. If people want to fix an appointment with you and uh, partake in this coaching uh, from you, how can they do that? Uh, Rishit, uh, thanks for that. It's pretty simple. You, anyone can go to LinkedIn. Just type my name. Sachin is easy. Bhandari is B-H-A-N-D-A-R-Y, not I. And on my profile, there's a link which says get in touch or stay in touch. Click on that. You can either you know follow my newsletter or subscribe to my newsletter or fix up a quick meeting with me if you want to talk about how uh, my coaching can help C-suit executives or your team members. Yeah. Super stuff. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Look forward to it. 94.3 Radio 1.